Hello and welcome to this video on alcohol oxidation. In this video, we're going to talk about the various methods of oxidizing primary and secondary alcohols and convert them into aldehydes and ketones. So what we are basically talking about is that if you have a primary alcohol like this, it is going to lose one of the H from the carbon that has the OH. This is called the alpha carbon. And it's going to lose one of the hydrogens from the O. And these two hydrogens are going to go away. And first of all, you will be getting an aldehyde. And the aldehyde further gets oxidized this H goes away and an OH comes instead of this H and we get a carboxylic acid. So first we'll check out how a primary alcohol gets oxidized and then we'll talk about how a secondary alcohol is going to get oxidized. So a primary alcohol loses one of the hydrogen atoms of the alpha carbon and one hydrogen from the OH group to form the aldehyde and then which goes on to get oxidized to acid uh, that is provided if you oxidize them with certain oxidizing reagents. Generally, we use alkaline k 4 and acidified dichromate. So this is uh, primary alcohol getting oxidized with alkaline k 4 or acidified dichromate. You don't have to use both. You can use either one of them. You first get an aldehyde which gets further oxidized to give you a carboxylic acid. Now here, these reagents are not very selective. So what happens is that it generally doesn't stop at the aldehyde stage. It goes on to form the carboxylic acid. But if you want to get an aldehyde from the primary alcohol and you want to use the same reagents here, then you got to use excess of alcohol and you got to distill the aldehyde produced. Now by using excess of alcohol, you try to ensure that this oxidizing agent this oxidizing agent is consumed by the primary alcohol itself and this oxidizing reagent is not left behind in order to oxidize the aldehyde further so the excess of the alcohol means that there isn't enough oxidizing agent present to carry out the second stage and distilling off, you know, we use this word distilling off, distilling of the aldehyde as soon as it forms. The idea is that removing the aldehyde, the moment it is formed, will ensure that it doesn't hang around in the reaction mixture and susceptible to get oxidized further. So the conditions for making aldehydes are heat and distillation. At the same time, we also have to ensure that the temperature of the reaction lies in between the boiling point of the alcohol and the acid. As you can look at the structure, both the alcohol and the acid have this OH group. This OH group ensures that there is hydrogen bonding. So the boiling point of the acid and the alcohol is higher than that of the aldehyde. And therefore, aldehyde having the lowest boiling point, we ensure that the temperature of the reaction lies slightly above the boiling point of the aldehyde so that the moment it is formed, it automatically boils off. That means it is already formed in the vapor form. It doesn't remain in the solution at all. And therefore, we can prevent its oxidation further. So, in the aldehyde formation, temperature of the reaction should be kept above the boiling point of aldehyde and below the boiling point of the alcohol. Let's look at the mechanism. I'm going to show you the mechanism using alkaline permanganate. And a similar mechanism is used for other oxidizing agents also. We have the primary alcohol. As you can see, there's a lone pair on O. I'm not showing you the second lone pair. This is permanganate ion, MnO4 minus. The lone pair on O attacks the Mn and the pi bond shifts to O. And this creates an intermediate like this. 
and it undergoes intramolecular proton exchange meaning the H this H moves from this oxygen to let's say this one one of the oxygens the negative charge is called intramolecular proton exchange IMPE and the H gets transferred here and then the OH minus comes picks up this H the bond between H and carbon goes between carbon and O and the bond between O and manganese breaks giving you aldehyde and H MnO4 negative now for the convenient and selective conversion of the primary alcohol to aldehyde that means if you don't want the aldehyde to become susceptible to go into the acid part we can use certain very selective compounds selective reagents called as PCC pyridinium chlorochromate and that will ensure that the product aldehyde does not get oxidized further so PCC will stop the reaction at the aldehyde stage so let's look at some of the reagents that can exclusively convert the primary alcohol into aldehyde and then primary alcohol into acid so the reagents used for the conversion of primary alcohol to aldehyde would be Collins reagent that is CrO3 in the presence of pyridine we use Confort reagent that is PDC pyridinium dichromate we can use activated DMSO and we can also use 2 iodo oxybenzoic acid and if you want the primary alcohol to go to the acid part you can use k 4 you can use Jones reagent that is CrO3 in sulfuric acid which in a way gives you dichromate you can use PDC in DMF as well as RuO4 ruthenium tetroxide now that is about a primary alcohol when you look at a secondary alcohol as you know a secondary alcohol has two alkyl or aryl groups and this thing is going to lose an H here it's going to lose an H here and give you a ketone so we get a ketone when we oxidize a secondary alcohol we use the same set of reagents and we get a ketone the advantage in this oxidation is the ketone is not that easy to oxidize further so the reaction automatically stops at the ketone part and we have the secondary alcohol becoming ketone with the same set of reagents and the mechanism is very very similar to that of the primary alcohol and if you use PCC in this case the secondary alcohol will become the ketone again it will stop again at the ketone stage so even PCC can be employed for this particular purpose another important thing about PCC is PCC is a hindered oxidizing agent it's got pyridine in it and therefore this hindrance will make it oxidize only those secondary alcohols that themselves are not sterically hindered so if the secondary alcohol is hindered then PCC may not be able to oxidize it effectively so if I look at this particular compound as you can see it has got two alcohol parts this one and this one both are secondary but this secondary alcohol has got two methyl groups adjacent to the carbon to adjacent to the alpha carbon and therefore this is hindered this fellow is hindered and this is relatively easier to oxidize so if I use PCC here I'm going to get something like this where the unhindered secondary alcohol gets oxidized to ketone and the other secondary alcohol that is hindered remains as it is so that is the oxidation of alcohols thank you